Good morning, traders. Can you hear me and uh, see my screen? If you could, just uh, in the uh, hashtag advanced webinar uh, room, just uh, type yes. I believe everything is good. All right, thank you, thank you, guys. Okay, excellent. All right, let's uh, let's get started. So this is the advanced uh, webinar. Uh, we do this uh, uh, every day uh, here in uh, every weekday uh, in uh, in Discord now. Um, I mean, we've been doing it and we've been testing it and we like it. it seems like everyone else likes it. Uh, so uh, we're going to continue on uh, at offering the uh, advanced education in here. Uh, and uh, it's a very nice offering. Uh, what uh, what you're getting here uh, is, uh, well, uh, when you subscribe to Bookmap, uh, you get access to the educational course that's online. That, that course is four parts. Uh, it starts with basic market mechanics, which is essential to understand uh, what makes the market move, etc. Uh, part two is about um, uh, the structure uh, starting to understand market structure based on those market mechanics. Part three is about strategies and um, setups. And part four is about uh, additional confluences uh, and correlations. So it's a pretty uh, uh, complete educational course. Uh, but then we have these follow-up webinars, these live webinars. What we do is go through that same course content, but in the live market. So it's all uh, based on this foundation of understanding binary moves in the market uh, and then extrapolating that out into bigger and bigger time frames uh, and um, uh, and then applying uh, order flow reading to it so uh, these webinars will go through and it's all forward looking we will read the current market and we will give insight to where we think price is going to move next it is not hindsight education uh, so you can really apply what you've learned from that course uh, and then we have um, uh, the um, live trading uh, two days a week uh, with Scott Pulsini, a futures trader, and Jay Trader, a stocks trader, Wednesdays and Thursdays. So the idea here behind our education is um, so that you have very complete, robust education. Uh, you have the course, learn how to read and apply it in the live market, and then learn from a few other traders what their setups are. Okay, so you have that foundation from Bookmap, and then you have the other traders. Uh, in addition, now we have Tom B uh, streaming here in Bookmap as well. Now he's going to be doing it, uh, you know, every day. Uh, and it, you you'll see the room right right in here, uh, right where we are in the voice channel. Uh, it's called Traders Lab with Tom B. You can see it there, uh, and uh, he will likely be in uh, when this webinar ends. Uh, you know, sometime this afternoon. Uh, he was there last couple uh, couple of days last week, uh, Thursday and Friday, uh, and you guys can learn a lot from Tom. Okay, he's uh, he's got a nice uh, advantage here compared to these advanced webinars, uh, is he can pop in and out uh, all day long. Uh, when so when something is good is ha is happening or setting up, uh, he can cover it. Uh, these uh, advanced uh, webinars here, uh, we have a time constraint. Uh, we have an hour to an hour and a half every day, and that's it. So if we, you know, we'll look at very small time frames if nothing is setting up, uh, and we'll also uh, uh, jump into much higher time frames uh, if um, uh, you know something is setting up. But basically, if it is setting up, uh, that's kind of the uh, the the difference here. So anyway. Um, one uh, one more thing, uh, Tom had mentioned this to me as well as uh, we, we've had issues uh, with this. Uh, in this advanced webinar room uh, or in Tom's streaming room, uh, you'll, um, you'll see that, uh, well, uh, you basically can access the um, live streaming uh, of, of the desktop. Now, the, um, uh, the problem... Uh, is though that Discord only offers 50 uh, slots uh, to that live streaming. Uh, so uh, Sam uh, set up here, you can see it says stream one, uh, and uh, it's just below my name there, and uh, it says live there. So uh, if, if we reach that 50 max and you can't see my screen, uh, you'll see the rebroadcast of it uh, in stream one. 
Okay, so that's the way we set it up here for now. Uh, so uh, you should be able to have access to it. Anyone will have access to the voice channel, but the live streaming uh, visual of the desktop, that, that will be, um, uh, you'll need to either access uh, my uh, screen or the stream one screen. Uh, now, just to go through it quickly, um, once you click on the streaming uh, there, uh, you know, it'll, it'll start to show the desktop or, you know, my, my screen. Um, if you want to access the chat as well, which I think is a really good idea, so you can ask questions or uh, have discussions back and forth, the way to do it uh, is to, in the you'll see in the live stream in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a, a button there to pop out the live stream into a different window, a new window. And that's what you do. Pop it out into a new window. Then you can go into the hashtag advanced webinar uh, text room and you can ask questions, et cetera, in there. That's the way to do it. Uh, and uh, we'll try to come up with a video or something there uh, that will describe that. So uh, there were some some uh, some users that were asking about that. All right. So anyway, I just want to go through it here. Uh, now let's uh, let's go through uh, the live analysis. Let's jump in here and uh, get into the markets. Uh, we've seen some pretty big um, big moves, and we got some volatility here. Uh, let's go through the disclosures. So you guys know what you're getting involved with here. Uh, the general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. The risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so let's jump in uh, and take a look at what's going on in here. Uh, and um, we're going to start with the higher time frame uh, and, and take a look. Now, look at the, um, boy, this is unbelievable. Look at the number of icebergs. Uh, now, I opened my book map just around 8 o'clock or just after 8 o'clock. Uh, it starts at zero here. We're already up at a, a 9,400, almost, almost 10,000. And so we already see an extreme amount of icebergs. Uh, they're absorbing uh, on the way down. They're where they're getting filled on the way down. It's going against them, but uh, they are getting filled on the way down. Okay, especially here, uh, right in this little area here. Uh, before uh, this is the blue line here. When you can see it kind of spike here, right into this area of 4,300. Okay, so uh, pretty pretty important area here uh, for today. And we're probably going to see a lot of action around this 4300 uh, today. All right, now you can see people getting stopped out all the way down as well. Uh, and uh, we're just looking at book map here and going over some bigger picture stuff. High liquidity getting here at 4350, also down in, in this kind of uh, 4330, 43, uh, what is this, uh, 20 or so, uh, 10, and then also the figure here, 4300. Okay, so. Uh, kind of looking for we're going to go through our scenarios here but we just first want to note these areas look at the amount of traders getting filled in here these are larger players okay they're parking the orders they're getting filled here so due to this we're going to start to look for a couple scenarios here uh, and one of them is going to be buyers starting to come in uh, and lifting it back up above 4300 okay or at least a retest to it for right now and that might be unfolding uh, at the moment okay we'll see uh, but we're going to start off with the bigger picture. Okay, so we're going to look at the daily, an hourly, and then also a 15-minute um, chart here. Okay, now here's our daily. Uh, and uh, we talked about this area here. We've been talking about it for uh, weeks now, a couple weeks. Uh, we saw beautiful bounces up out of this area here. And now uh, we're, this was the kind of box or this area here where we had buying wicks uh, uh, previously. The, the sellers have cut through it now, okay? So we, we in, in fact, we were looking for a retest back up to the top of this box. Uh, I think it was on um, on Friday, right? And uh, uh, Friday morning uh, and, and played out beautifully. Okay, we were looking for that scenario uh, and, um, and we got it. Uh, now you can see the continuation though uh, with the sellers. Now look where they are though. And let's, uh, let's just make this a bit bigger here. Okay. They're down where these previous wicks are. 
okay so looking to see if we can uh, maybe break let me get a few more bars in here okay yeah i'm i'm really i think we're going to find some buyers down here we're going to find certainly we're going to find some sellers covering uh in this area here maybe we can drop a little bit below it here uh and then i'm i'm looking for some buyers to come in all right and uh and where they might move it here well an easy move would be up up here uh, right into this kind of area here uh, just for starters that would be about 4315 okay and then maybe even up here around 4400 okay i mean we got some big moves here all right so uh, uh, anyway we'd be looking at uh, some uh, uh, areas in here where there's previous buying we already know we're there and we're already starting to see some buying coming in you can see the wick already all right so we're going to be looking for this it's going to be a really critical area in here uh, we might get one more push down below it and then a snap back up into it and then back up. Uh, we'll uh, be on the lookout for it. Let's take a look at the hourly uh, and uh, see what's going on. You can see we just opened down here. We have a gap. So here's another reason to think, uh, you know, maybe a gap fill back up here. Another level, 43.85. All right. Fif uh, 15 minute. Yeah, same idea here. Gap fill. Uh, what about swing high as well? 43.40. Okay, these are all areas we're interested in uh, on the higher time frame if we get our buyers starting to move price back into these areas. Uh, and it's already start starting to set up pretty nicely here. Uh, so uh, uh, we can see the um, uh, liquidity getting filled all the way down here. Okay, so let's uh, let's mark up some areas in here uh, uh, on that scenario for the for retests. Okay, first off, 4,300. Okay, so that's that's an easy one. Uh, the uh, 4315, somewhere around here. That's also a really nice one here. Look at the structure in the market here. The, what I mean by structure is the back and forth in here, and then the break. Now look at the break, retest back to it, break again, retest one more time to it here. Okay, so we're going to mark that area up as well. And then here's our 4330, uh, 40, right up here. Okay, again, structure move down sideways consolidation a break of that consolidation a retest to it up here so somewhere around in here maybe 38 36 something like that uh, and then uh, what else did we say we the gap fill was uh, 43.85 i believe right let's just zoom out some more some more up in here yeah that's about right Okay, uh, and then we have 4,400 the figure up there, All right? So anyway, some uh, some lines to uh, just uh, take a look at or uh, consider for our, um, uh, our uh, uh, areas for retesting. Um, now we're you know obviously we're still in a downtrend here. Uh, we've already got the retest back to where we just broke from uh, here, as you guys can see, uh, and uh, uh, we're we're still finding some selling pressure in here. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's get a, maybe a, a, a retest back into uh, 4260 and maybe 4250, the figure down below here. All right, so uh, these are some of the areas on the downside we're looking at. Uh, and uh, yeah, we have 4200 as well. There's liquidity down here. All right, so we're just kind of marking up some areas uh, and um, uh, want to be looking for the order flow around some of those areas here. Okay, and then we're going to go through our different scenarios. Now, once we hit some of these areas in here, then we can really read the order flow. Uh, good morning, David. Good morning, Alan, uh, Fabio, uh, everyone else in here, Sam, Doug, AP. Uh, so uh, welcome to the, uh, the webinar here. So the... Um, Anyway, yeah, these are some of the some of the uh, areas we're kind of um, keen on uh, looking at the order flow here. And let's start to you know jump in here and, and take a quick a closer look at what's going on here. Okay, so uh, we didn't quite get down yet to forty uh, this liquidity here at forty two sixty. We have some buying trying to come in here, uh, but uh, this is what we look for uh, in terms of market structure. What's really important to understand in market structure is if it breaks or not. See how it didn't break it yet? 
Okay, and what we're talking about is around this 4275. Okay, so now buyers are going to try to break it. Okay, and it failed so far. Okay, they're still trying here. Let's mark it up. All right, now they're starting to break it. Okay, so let's see if this is going to be a false breakout or not. And if we come back into the range here, probably well, right about where we are, uh, maybe a little bit lower, maybe down here around this uh, 4268. Uh, okay, and this liquidity down here is what we're kind of looking for. Yeah, here they come. All right, so this is the first area to test here is 4268. And now see there how they're pulling that liquidity? See how they just flip the order book as well? They pulled, added on the bid, uh, on the offer at, at 71 here. Okay, so that's a nice little trap. Let's look at, the, they're even offering lower. Now we're getting a battle here that's starting to shape up. They offered lower. The buyers took them on here, okay? So the buyers actually uh, uh, went for it here. So uh, now, if we're, we're coming back up here, this false breakout might become a, a real breakout here, okay? Why Why do we think that now? Why, why is that higher probability? It's because of this activity right here, okay? This is where Bookmap can, can really help you. you. You see that high liquidity, they offered lower, and buyers took them on. Okay, so I'm looking to see if we see even more buyers on the bid here and then more buyers of green dots here lifting the offer up into our 80 level. Okay, right up here, the swings up here, maybe they can get back up into 85, 42, 85, or maybe uh, 90 or, or 92 up here. Okay, we're watching. Looking pretty good. Buyers are still coming in. So let's see them take on 80 here, looking for it. There we go. Okay, 80s transacting. Still looking for them to take this higher here. Okay, maybe we'll get a pullback to 75. We've already gotten a pullback to 75 here. Okay, we might get another one here. Let's let's take a look. All right, so yeah, this is this is strong. More buyers coming in. So 85 is the next level here. Okay, and uh, we're above getting up to these swings here so looking for a 90 or 92 level here okay now how to take advantage of this right we're going through the reading pretty quickly <laughs> good morning alan yeah uh uh the um uh you know we i want to go through a couple different scenarios in here for trade management okay now these aren't recommendations it's just considerations uh, so that uh, you have an idea how to take advantage of uh, of this kind of order flow here because we're seeing some good stuff here, right? So just about to trade up into 90 and 92 here. Okay, look at the bid as well. And look at the action on the bid and what or the reaction to that bid. We're finding more buyers, right? Okay, so looking for 92, 92.50. Now we're going to get a pullback at some point here. Okay, and pullback probably, I'd be looking at this little area here where we broke from and we see some structure right in here. There we go. So we're through our 92. This has not, has not pulled back yet. So looking at 4,300, the figure. But I'm still, I'm kind of looking for a pullback here. This has been some pretty strong buying. And uh, maybe maybe back to 90 here. That's where some liquidity is right now, as you guys can see. So, yeah, getting a bit of a pullback here. Okay, now we had to go through this rather quickly. Um, but this is really great stuff here. Uh, guys, this is kind of, I mean, this is kind of picture perfect. Um this is exactly what we want to see. Uh, so, you know, uh, I want to do, uh, oh, the, and the VIX had a good tell, tell, telltale as well. Uh, thanks, David. Yeah, good good stuff there. Yeah, excellent. 
Well, way to go. I mean, David, that's, that's, I mean, looking at correlations, I think is correlated markets, uh, the VIX, other indexes, whatever, um, is, you know, I, I, in my, in my opinion, I think it's one of the strongest, uh, things you can look at, uh, because everything is relative. So, you know, it can one, one thing compared to another, uh, and, uh, what, what is the value of these uh, different indexes or instruments, one compared to another? So uh, when you start to see that correlation between those markets uh, and one moving before the other, you, you can really, uh, uh, you know, it, it offers a tremendous edge, I, I believe, in my opinion. Right now, what else do we have here? We had we already noticed immediately. We started off the webinar talking about all of this, all of these uh, traders getting filled on the bid down in these areas here. Okay, this is this is classic stuff. Because at the open, what what happened uh, uh, last week? Market dropped, you know, heavily, and uh, it it. Um, uh, Open up the open up a cash um, a session here uh, to the downside. Get people going short. The fear, getting them involved into the market, being on the other side. Larger players want want to you know take take what they can uh, and uh, and looking for the moves uh, back up into ranges. Okay. Now, how can we see it in Bookmap in the bigger picture here? Very simply, liquidity filled here filled in here see the big red dots into this high liquidity uh, the heat map showing the red orange in this area in this area here as well even all the way down here that you know at uh, around nine uh, 950 or so more down here uh, and then and down in these areas here we're starting to kind of just slow down a little bit we see some buying coming in okay so uh, yeah we just traded up to our our 4300 all right so uh yeah, you know, it's like, uh, well, I don't, I don't know where we started looking for this move to start to unfold, uh, but, uh, I mean, it's a 25-point move here from 75 up to 4,300. That's pretty nice in uh, uh, how many minutes here. So this was back at uh, uh, 23, 10.23, my God. So we're, we're just talking like, like, yeah, five, five minutes or so. Yeah, pretty pretty nice move. Pretty nice move. That's it, with order flow here. Like we, you know, you really got to be on your toes and watch it as it unfolds. We don't know when these are going to unfold, but the order flow will tip its hand, and that's what we're looking for. Okay, well, we're still in an uptrend uh, on this very small time frame. Okay, from basically from this point onward, uh, somewhere around down here, around our 4275 area where we broke this here. Am I, am I going too fast for you guys? I still didn't go through some of the trading, you know, management scenarios in here. Uh, ways to jump in when you see this because it moves quickly, you know, and and to take advantage of it. I mean, you have to you have to test your own, uh, you know, trading uh, 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 strategies and, and trade management. What's what works best for you? What do you feel most comfortable with? Uh, over over the you know time that you've traded, what you know do you like to kind of scale in or scale out? Uh, or both, or do you like one and done, just all in or all out at certain areas? You know, it, it, it really depends. It depends on you. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, David, you're talking about the VIX. Nice. Yeah, that's really nice. I mean, you you, you were unable to uh, execute in Bookmap because of the delay in data. So, uh, 
if you're getting a delay in 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 uh, in data uh, in in bookmap, like uh, well, it should. Um, I mean, I, I haven't gotten any. I I know that when when there's volatility, there there's potential for that. Um, but uh, also when placing orders. Okay. Um, I good morning, Dove. Um, the uh, Dove, I owe you an answer to your question. Uh, I'm so sorry. It's just been, yeah. Uh, I'll get I'll get to you. Um, but uh, the um, uh, VWAP is rest. Yeah, I don't even have the VWAP up uh, right now. But uh, you can see we return back to. I, I believe this is my VWAP here. Let me let me double check. Yeah. Yeah, so it's already returned to it, okay, and it's right in line with 4,300 here. Uh, so we we we've got kind of kind of multiple uh, uh, you know uh, uh, items here at this at this one level around this one level. Um, yeah, the uh, if you're getting delays in here, and, and and you guys are getting delays, is it with rhythmic? Okay, I want to show you on the uh, where you can go. Uh, to to um, uh, look at some uh, possible uh, fixes for that. Okay, there there are quite a few, right? And we don't know we don't know if it's if it's book map or if it's the data feed or sometimes it's the exchange or if it's your internet. Uh, one thing to do immediately though is make sure you're wired wired uh, to your uh, uh, modem router. Okay, that that's for sure. Uh, and then the different servers uh, are also uh, really important. Uh, so if you're connected to Rhythmic, uh, go with the, and, and David, you're in, in Europe, so that you want that European uh, uh, server. Yeah, guys, this uptrend still continues. So looking for 43.10. Uh, okay, and then our 15 level. Our 15 level looks good. Uh, as well, that's the kind of a swing up there, uh, and it, it relates to some of that. Um, God, I think I forget what Fort 4315 was. It wasn't the gap fill. Uh, that was 85. Let's take a look here. What was it? 4340 was the high of the day. Uh, I, I forget what our 15 level was. Maybe it was just maybe it was just here in Bookmap that we we're looking at. Yeah, I think it might have been just the swing up here. Yeah, memory allocation is one of them to take a look at. Uh, you know, I think the easiest way to, to kind of uh, uh, answer the majority of your questions here uh, is to show you where to go here. All right, so uh, go to Bookmap.com. All right, and then. Go to the more button here, okay, and go to knowledge base. All right, first off, uh, one thing to check is your system requirements that you'll see here. We're in the user guide section of the knowledge base. Uh, check check your um, uh, system requirements here. Uh, that'll be very helpful. Okay, there's recommended here is minimum, and then there's recommended, uh, and then heavy use here with MBO full resolution, blah blah blah. Uh, you know, take take a look at uh, some of these things in here. All right, so that might be very helpful uh, immediately. Um, other things to take a look at here uh, in the knowledge base is scroll down a little bit further, uh, and um, we can start to look at uh, performance issues. Is that where it is? Let's try that. Yeah, so performance issues, low memory, uh, and um, I know there's there's more than that. Yeah, rhythmic issues as well uh, here. Okay, so uh, click on that. And you can you can see on the right hand side, once you click in that section, you'll see, you know, also on the right right hand side the as you scroll through, you'll you'll kind of go through all the different uh, uh, subjects up here. Now, I know there was a section in here on performance related. It might, they may have changed it, but um, uh, 
yeah this the, i'm sorry guys so yeah definitely some of these in here that i just pointed you to here but also in the help section number 10 here um look at um uh, book map uh, or you know performance faqs right here okay this will be really helpful right uh, so yeah you you can even you'll see the other like i said the subjects here on the, on the right hand side so take a look at that uh, that'll be helpful for you okay so bog you said this is rhythmic um, this is with rhythmic there's one called europe there's another one called frankfurt uh, europe solved it for you I uh, didn't have to try out the Frankfurt. Okay, that's good. Uh, Gazoo, let's see. Looking at levels it makes good sense, but seeing levels and watching for a break is or hold is way different than putting... The trade on yeah well let me let me tell you a little bit about our education here this is not a trading room uh, but we, we can go through some trading scenarios for sure okay we did it last week uh, we do it all the time yeah yeah I mean it's this is about reading order flow uh, in here okay we're already we're, we're just about to come up to our 4315. Uh, as well. Now there is no to answer your point, uh, Gazoo. There is no reason to get out of this right now. Just by looking at the um, uh, the structure in the in the order flow here. Okay, there was no reason to get out of this trade. Okay, so uh, you know we made we made uh, we can go through different trading scenarios in here. Now that will be hindsight, but we'll go through it in real time, no problem. Uh, but it is the the goal here of the education in Bookmap. Uh, is um, uh, to understand the order flow. Okay, you can trade it so many different ways, but we're going to cover the order flow, right? So you you want trading strategies? Well, you can talk to different educators on the different strategies. We can go through multiple trading strategies, uh, but our goal here is to uh, learn order flow. Uh, get the edge in book map, and then you can apply whatever trading strategy you want. Okay, so uh, there are many, many different ways to trade. Book map is a platform, not a trading strategy. All right, so uh, that's uh, our goal. That's why we offer um, uh, live trading with J Trader on Wednesdays and and Scott Bolsini, uh, futures trader, on uh, Thursdays. That's the that's the goal. Uh, so you have a very complete education here. You got the course. You have these live, forward-looking analysis webinars, and this is all free. I, I really, I encourage you take a look around. You're not going to find that from a, another platform, and if you do, they're going to charge you quite a bit, hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars. And you're getting this all for free. It's pretty, it's pretty nice education. Uh, we feel. So I hope, I hope you enjoy it. I, I hope it provides value for you. Um, Yeah, well, we can go through different scenarios here, uh, Gazoo, and then it's up to you on how, how you want to manage it, uh, you know, uh, along the way. Oh, thank you, Fabio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks, Alan. Oh, okay. So, uh, Kebab, yours is like, 12 points behind so yeah please go through some of those scenario or not scenarios but some of those uh, suggestions or you know information in what i just showed in the uh let me let me put it into the chat okay uh, because this is really going to help you so the faqs is right here okay here's one uh and the other one was with rhythmic down here okay and that is rhythmic issues maybe here that ought to help as well okay yeah there there is one simple i mean i i mbo data is a lot it's, it's pretty heavy okay so uh one thing that will help you for sure you would have to lose all if you have the stops and icebergs you're going to lose your data uh you would restart bookmap or restart your your rhythmic um 
uh, uh, connection. Let me show you. Um, this will do it for sure. All right. Um, it, oh, well, I shouldn't say for sure because I don't know what your, it might be, you know, your connection. It might be your server. That's, that's another thing really important to play around with. Okay, so let's go to, I'll configure a new uh, rhythmic uh, connection here. All right, so add connection. No, hold on a minute. And we'll make it rhythmic. Okay, and this is where you, you'll put your username and password. Okay, um, and however you know, you, don't worry about any of any of this information up above here. Aggregate quotes, though. Okay, if you're having huge latency issues here, check this box for aggregate quotes. All right, that will do the trick. It well, I I don't I, I shouldn't say that it should help a, t a tremendous amount. Uh, you're not going to get MBO data any longer. It, what it's going to do is it, it's still you're still going to get pretty high quality data, but it's going to aggregate the quotes together and bundle them and send them as packages. Okay, so it's not going to be quite as accurate, um, but that's fine, uh, especially when it gets really um, volatile like this. Uh, I mean, the data from Rhythmic is pretty amazing. It's, it's highly accurate. It is the most accurate that we found. Okay, so um, uh, it, it also... Uh, when you when you know you get the MBO data in with uh, rhythmic as well, um, it is um, it's it's unbelievable uh, uh, data. All right, so uh, aggregating the quotes like this should do the trick. All right, so uh, just uh, consider that. All right, I mean twelve points behind you, you, that's an issue. All right, I, I'd say reach out to support at bookmap.com. All right. Uh, and uh, and get somebody. I mean, you can see like I, I'm not having any issues whatsoever. Uh, all all morning long, I haven't had any any delays whatsoever uh, here. And I have MBO data. All right now, I have a you know a PC that's uh, it's pretty powerful, but it's nothing. It's it's not extraordinary. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, within the last you know couple of years, it's kind of like you know. Uh, yeah, it's good, but it's it's nothing extraordinary. I think I have 32 gigs of RAM, uh, CPU. I I forget what I have, but yeah, it's it's not bad. Okay, and I have quite a few uh, symbols open here as well. That's another one. This will be another huge saver. If you're just trading only the ES, then get rid of all of your other symbols. That will help tremendously. Okay. All right. So anyway, I I understand. Uh, I I want to try to fix that and address uh, uh, it now with you guys instead of having it uh, through support. Okay. So uh, th that should be helpful. Um, all right. Let me know. Uh, otherwise, I, I want to continue on with the uh, forward-looking analysis and uh, help you guys with the order flow readings in here. There's still no reason to get out of this. Look at the structure here. Okay. This is important. It's really and really important. Uh, to understand market structure and this is this is what we're looking at here okay higher lows higher highs it's still making them okay so we don't have any reason to get out of this yet okay so uh, now up here though and this is what this is my way of trading i like to take some off i like to even front run some of these areas and take take some off so around this 34 or uh, 4315 area and this liquidity in here, I would probably take some off. Okay, I would move my stop up. I would consider getting back in at lower areas in here as well. Okay, if the order flow still looks good, uh, you can scale in. It's a new trade. Move your stops up. Take some off up here. We'll look for a pullback. Move your stop up. T get back in here. Take some off up here. Move your stop up. Okay. So there, here's here's one trading scenario, and you would have knocked this out of the park. Okay. We would have been in down here. Okay. We're looking for this. We're looking for a reason to get in. All right. Now this is looking a little bit different now, though, too. Okay. We did make a higher high here, but not by much. Right. 
uh, it's not even it didn't even make it back up into 4320 in this trend line that we kind of or trend channel that we have here okay now look what we're doing we're breaking the low here okay so this is looking different now now i'm still looking you know for maybe a move back up into it here maybe back up into yeah you know maybe 4305 or, or 4310 uh up here if we can get our if we can get some buyers in here uh then i would be looking for that okay we might not Okay, so yeah, now we're breaking it again. Okay, maybe we can get back down to 42.90 here. But we went down below this swing here now, so we're watching. And we might get down to 43.90 here. Nothing high probability at the moment. Okay, so we're, we're kind of waiting and watching on this. But now, this see how this structure is now broken? Okay, so this is now changing our outlook. We're not as bullish as we were earlier at all. Okay, in fact, you can see the profile here. We're kind of right at this 4300 uh, figure, and there's a lot of action around this area here. Okay, so now we're kind of looking for some back and forth. Pullbacks, 4290, 4290 is just about to trade. And I would look for, um, yeah, 42.90 maybe to get filled and then maybe even a little bit lower, get some stops in here. And then I would look for buyers to come back in and try to trade it right back to 4,300. Okay, there's multiple reasons why. Uh, Vintage, let's see, what about the high number of stops? Uh, yeah, let's, we'll take a look at the stops here in just a minute. Stops are a little different than icebergs. Um, well, <laughs> obviously they're different. Uh, I'll, I'll explain uh, here in, in, in just a few minutes here. I'm, I'm looking, we're down at our 87 level. Um, I'm really curious to see if we can get some, uh, we should see some stops trigger down here. All right, we're going to keep continue on. We're going to go back down to this 80 level, it looks like. And then I'm still looking for a pullback here on this buy side. Pullback would come to about 90 or maybe this liquidity up here around 93, 94. Okay, 4,300 also so at, uh, putting some, someone placing some liquidity there. Okay, here come our buyers. See the pull of liquidity there? bit a bit here uh, so uh, yeah looking for the move to 90 would love to see the bid out uh, add more here here they come okay so now still looking for 90 90s traded let's see if we can get up to 92 and a half or 94 up here 93 94 Yeah, not high probability though. N not high probability. Right, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of all over the place, below it, above it. Okay, just about to trade it here. There it is. Okay, so that traded. But uh, yeah, not, not, you know, not high probability. Uh, this, this I thought was high probability up to 90 or higher probability. And and right now I you know hands off right now. Just looking looking for uh, something to you know give us a some sort of edge in here. All right, that might be it. See the little double bottom here. Okay? So this is what I mean. Sellers here. 
lack of sellers here. And we actually buyers in here. We're right back down again. And now we're actually even breaking it. Okay, now let's see if we can get buyers back in above it here, above this 88 level. Looking for green dots above it. And then a move back up to, um, yeah, maybe our, our 90, 93, 50 or something like that. Nope. Nope, more selling. All right, buyers can't seem to do it. So if we get our sellers here at 85, I'm looking for a nice move down into 81 and 82 here. Okay, now that now they're able to do it though. Yeah, it's just it's it's really back and forth. I mean, 90 just came in here with high liquidity that kind of disrupted the whole pattern. And they're starting to pull here. So let's see let's see if the sellers can uh, can take it take it through 85 on down to 81 and 80. And we're getting an answer immediately here. They're not. We found buyers here. Yeah. Okay, I'd love to see more buyers underneath here. Around 88. Okay, they're pulling here. So these guys up here around 94, they don't want to sell. And they keep pulling as price comes up toward them. Just not finding enough buyers yet. Okay, now we are. All right, let's see it now. Let's see if we can get more buyers in here and move it. Okay, on up to 4,300. Okay, basically you'd be getting in here, you'd place your stop down below here, maybe 91, uh, and you'd be looking for taking your profit maybe up at here around 98 and a half or, or 99. Okay, there you go. There's a setup right there. Okay, and you'd be out. There you go. There's a setup. All right. Now I have to go through that quickly, but uh, let's let's review it, all right? And uh, yeah, nice move to 4,300. All right, so what did we learn from this? All right, so and this is not a recommendation; it was just reading this in real time and some considerations uh, for how how to apply uh, some of the uh, order flow readings in here, okay? In real time, all right? So I. I hope uh, let's see it was uh, Kazoo I think was asking about this, All right? So oh god, I kind of remember what we said. I think it was right in here we were thinking about getting in. So this would be our entry, right? And we said our stop was down here around 90, 91, something like that, and we'd be taking some off up here. Okay, so let's see that would be uh, 40, 93 on up to about 98. 98 and a half. Uh, so um, yeah, like you know, a five and a half point point uh, uh, scalp there. Now it's pretty volatile. That's usually not a scalp, but uh, uh, anyway, in this in this environment, it is for sure. Okay, so what did we see though in here? All right, well, we're, we're waiting, watching, looking at, and we didn't think we had an edge in here. Okay, now once once we saw the buyers kind of uh, a trade into and through this area here at 90, it's looking pretty good. Uh, we know that there's buying pressure now. Okay, this little area in here gave us a lot of information. Uh, we came back up to, this, to the swing here and we saw some buyers, and then we pulled back and then we found some more buyers up here at a little bit higher high looking pretty good now another thing that really helped us here was they're pulling they're pulling on the offer they don't want to be and we we mentioned it in here too they don't want to be sellers in here so uh 
and then yeah we wanted to see more on the bid uh, at a higher level and there was a little bit in here and a little bit in here it was okay uh, not nothing spectacular uh, but uh, you know there it does skew the offer or I'm sorry it does skew the bid uh, and uh, and they're pulling on the offer we're at, we're making higher highs and we're starting to see the buyers come in so we're looking for them to kind of break this area and we're looking for them to trade it back to 4300 and then you know the trading or the trade management strategy is to get out a little bit ahead of it okay so uh, uh, ahead of that liquidity here all right now this little scalp or this little uh, trade idea here again is it's not a recommendation uh, this is just um, a consideration, uh, and there are many considerations. Okay, how, and it's really up to you. Like maybe you're, if you're looking for a bigger move here, then you wouldn't be placing your stop down here. You'd be placing it way down here. You'd still be in this. And you'd be looking for the move back up into like 15 and above. In fact, not only 15 would you be looking for, you'd probably be looking for the move back up into uh, this kind of 37 or 40 we said 40 uh, that that's not the gap fill that's the high of the cash session okay is up here in fact let me redraw this line okay so the high of the cash session is what we're looking for now watch we'll see this might be it look at actually this is now here's another time frame to take a look at okay that little scalp was in here well, here's the bigger picture. I mean, like, you, I, you know, makes you look kind of foolish, or that little scalp we're looking for in that small time frame. Well, here's a nice higher time frame move here. In fact, structure is really nice in here. Okay, I didn't see it earlier. Structure, pull back to the structure, get in. Still looking for the move up here, 15, and then maybe uh, our 38 or 40, whatever it is up here. High of the cash session. It's going to be a lot of stops uh, triggered up here. Okay, so some uh, some considerations here. All right. Well, we just seem to be kind of caught again, right in the middle. Um, and it is the high volume node. It is the VWAP. Uh, but higher time frame, let's just take a look again here. Okay, we noted higher time frame, lots of liquidity getting filled here, 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 all the way down. Tremendous amount of icebergs. Okay, it was up up to about 9,400 here. Or no, 10, I think we did reach 10,000. Yeah, yeah, we went above 10,000 in iceberg buying. And these are all buys in here. The the red line are stops uh, and just about 10,000, which is funny uh, as well. 11,000, almost 12,000. Okay. Don't look at the crossover in here. Um, it's, it's not like that. It's not MACD that you're looking for a crossover. What you're looking at is the, the kind of like relationship between stops and icebergs. So you can see there's there was a stop run and then just after that stop run they started to get filled on the on the bid uh, with icebergs buying icebergs. Okay, that was in this little area here. Now let's look at this area here because um, and let's we we we've done this in the past and it worked out really nicely uh, many times over. It's, it's pretty pretty simple exercise. When did these guys start to buy? Okay, here, up here. Okay, so around, uh, therefore, we can even add this as a level, a potential level to look at, okay, up around this 4350. Here's why. We have icebergs in here starting to get filled. Okay, now the, I had icebergs in from, yeah, it was just right around that time. So I, I opened up my book map right around here. Uh, so... Uh, uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, immediately started capturing some icebergs, uh, buy icebergs here. So the idea or the concept here is 
Well, if we have lots of traders, uh, larger players getting filled, and we know they're also getting filled on the bid, and all of these areas all the way down, and we have icebergs as well, you know, all the way back up to about here, they're still buying uh, up to about this point here. So this this is actually a critical area right here, we're, and we're just at it right now, 85, 4285. So we know the position of larger players. Where are they going to start to be in profits? Okay. Well, I mean, they're probably dabbling in profit up in these areas here, but they have to get above the VWAP and above this 4,300 to get into profit. Okay. So that's one of the scenarios to look for is buying off of these areas here then. Okay. If the order flow starts to show us that, then we'd be looking for a move back to 4300, uh, 4350, sorry. Okay, here they come. Let's see if we get our move now. Let's see, we got some buying in here. Looking for them to move it right back to 4300. Okay, I don't think it's, I don't think it's high probability at the moment. You know, it just looks, I don't, I don't see enough buyers in here. They can't even break this little high here. Okay, but we're looking for the move back to 4,300. Let's look at the bid. How does the bid shape up here at 4,280? Are they are they bidding in front of it? Starting to, starting to bid a little bit in front of it there. Okay, do we get some buyers coming in? A little bit. Okay, so let's see if we can get more here at 4,290. Green dots here at 4,290. And they should be able to lift it right back up to the swing here at 95. Okay, nothing high probability at the moment still. I don't see those big green dots in here. So I, they're not lifting. And look, look, we're just right in the middle, smack dab in the middle between 4280 liquidity here on the bid and 4300. We're right in the middle of it. We're looking for an edge here, and we don't have it at the moment. Okay, see how they're showing a little bit on the offer there, and we sold off a little bit. So there's still some selling, that means that there's still some selling pressure in here. Uh, so vintage, what about the high number of stops? Shouldn't the market go down to grab them? Uh, well, stops are always going to be like, you know, uh, um, you know, typically people exiting the market. So you usually around the, the, that's why we look for false breakdowns and breakouts and stop runs below those areas. Uh, and then buyers or, you know, for someone to, uh, let's say it's a, a stop run to the downside. Okay. Then we're looking for buyers to come in back up above. Let's suppose this was a big stop run right here. It's not. Okay, but let's suppose it was right in here. Then we'd be looking for buyers back up above that area. So basically, uh, that would mean that if the majority of these sell sellers in here um, are getting stopped out. Now, that's something you'd have to go in and, and check out uh, if if they were. Now, th in this scenario, it's not. We know it's not a big stop run. There's some stops in here, but it's nothing spectacular. Um yeah, actually, we can go through that little trade example over here. Now, or, or we can go through this example in real time here. Here we go. So here's a stop run. Okay, now we're looking for buyers above it. Okay, the scenario is buyers up here. Do we get them? Not yet. Looking again here, and then looking, here we go. Now, see, they pulled up here. Let's see if they add on the bid. Let's see if we get our buyers here. Around 83 or so. Okay, let's see it now. We got to see it. Not yet. Starting to get interesting. And nothing. Now, there's the bid on 80. Okay, you sell it and sellers took them on. 
So we got some selling pressure in here. Okay, so these are new sellers in here. So can they take it down to 75, 70? Okay, or are they going to get become food food in the food chain here if we can get buyers back up above our our 80 level now? And we can't so far. There, now we're now we're there. Okay, so let's see now. Let's see these buyers take it now up to 85, and let's see if they can get to 90. Okay, look at the bid as well. See the bid. Okay, so you'd be getting in somewhere in this area in here, and be looking for these buyers to lift it now back up to 90. Okay, so there's your beautiful pullback to to where they came in. Okay, you can even have your stop at break even right now. So this is a riskless trade. Okay, understand? Okay, you'd be stopped out there at break even. Okay, still looking for the scenario though. Okay, buyers come in and again. You can go for it again. You know, I want to see some more on the bid here. That'd be good. Looking for our buyers. And we didn't get them, right? So, so we're fine. So just going through some in real time and you know some trade um, considerations. They're not recommendations. It's just ways to read the order flow here. We we're looking for buyers. We got them. We got a pullback. We'd be looking. Okay, well if buyers are going to take it here. We know that these are new sellers. They're going to be upended, and we should see a stop run to the upside. We know there was a stop run over here as well. Uh, so now at this point we're looking for 90 and, and this one didn't work out there's still some more sellers in here okay so now we're looking for them to fill this liquidity down here around 75 76 yeah sorry guys I'm going through it really quickly um, you know uh, it, it, and you, it has to be, it, you just, it has to be, you know, and it has to be mechanical. I mean, to the sense where you're just like, all right, this, I see it. I, I'm looking for an edge. I'm looking, that's why we spend the time going through these different scenarios. So when you see that scenario, you, you know, you can react to it because that's what you're looking for. And you know what it looks like. And that's your edge. Now that's something you have to go back and define. So now look, look at the buyers come in now. Right, we had a little bit on the bid here, and look at reaction to that bid right here. Okay, here's our pullback. You know, this is a this is a strong move, so we'll pull back, get in, and look for 90. Let's see if these if we get them up here. We've got to get them up here. 84, we gotta get buyers up here. Okay, this is still holding. This is where they broke out from, it's still holding. But it's not looking too good here. It's not looking good at all. All right, let's see if we can get... Yeah, so no, this one didn't work out. So they're going to likely go for 76 and 75 here. Okay, we gave it a shot though. Yeah, I'm still looking for this scenario to, to play out though, to be honest. So here we go, one more shot at it. Let's, let's, see, let's see if they go for it here. We gotta get our buyers up here around 82 to, to 83. Now we can start to look at this volume in here. It's not bad. This is not bad. Okay, but we want to see you know more consistent buying here. Even this one failed here. You know they bought, they bought again, came back, retest here, and it failed. It came back down into 76 or uh, yeah 76 and a half or so. Now it's just just trading into this liquidity now. Okay, and beautiful stop run. Okay, anyone that bought in here. 
you know, we would have gotten, you know, we were looking to get out. If it's not going to work out here, th then we're looking for the next scenario, high probability scenario. Okay, fine. Take the break even, take a small loss. Okay. Now, we're still looking for, now everyone got stopped out. This liquidity or these, these transactions in here, if they're stops, again, that's people exiting. So we're looking for people to enter. And we're looking for them to enter up above 75. If we see our big green dots up here at 75, then, then the game is on. Okay, looking for it. Okay, all right. So there's some buyers here. You know, this is this is where you'd be getting in. Okay, liquidity on the offer there. And what's the reaction to it? Now they just pulled. Okay, here come our buyers. Okay, you could move your stop to break even. Okay, is based off of these stops in here. Okay, and you just got stopped out at break even. You gave it a shot. You know, this order flow event here. And it didn't pan out. Let's zoom out. Let's let's uh, you know uh, take a look at the bigger picture here. So we're coming back down to kind of lows of the day here. Okay, hit, hitting, this is where we actually got in, or, you know, we're looking to it back back in this area here. So, again, like, and let me cover this here. I think it's kind of, this is important. Like, when we saw this order flow event in here, we're looking for the move higher. Okay, now we're back to the same level here. Okay, and, and we're still looking to see if we get buyers back in here again. Okay, this is where this is where things changed here you can see it all right I don't see anything happening here I see actually you know more more I mean we're, we broke this little little structure in here and this is why structure is so important, and I want to I want to cover this in in um, like we did uh, last week in here because uh, we got a lot of new traders in here. So I want to cover it, it's really important, and this is our education, like uh, why we uh, go over market mechanics, understanding those binary market mechanics and how important they are. It's just so important, right? And then that can be extrapolated to higher time frame market structure. Okay, so like in here, look, look at this event here. We're looking for sellers down here. Okay, we're starting to get some buyers in here. And we're looking for sellers down at around this 71 area. And if we get enough, we should be able to break it down into 60 and then maybe uh, 4250 as well. Okay, here comes some sellers. Okay, now we get some buying here, but they haven't broken any structure at all. Okay, so that means that there's not enough to like lift it. So we're not looking for a move yet on that buy side, even though we see buyers coming in here. Okay, now we're looking for sellers down here and for them to take it away down into 70 and 60. That's the scenario or one scenario.
on the sell side. Okay, buy scenario would be, you know, to see our, our big green dots up here around 77 and a half. There they are. Now let's see them lift it. Careful on this one. Careful, very careful here because this could be just enough to get the buyers on the hook to get sellers down here again. And then a nice move back down into 60, 70 and 60. Okay, so we're, we're, we're really watching it closely here. You'll see what I mean. If, if we get our, if the sell side works out here, you'll see what I mean. Okay, big red dots here. These guys are on the hook. They started to buy, and then they're going to be just the fuel to the fire to the downside here. Yeah, I would, I'm, I would hold off on this one. I mean, it may, you know, it's looking like it wants to go back up to 85 and 90, uh, maybe, maybe 4,300. But yeah, still being careful on this one here. Here, here's why the scenario is get down below here. All of these guys that oh yeah, you know, get the breakout, you know, get the move back uh, to 4,300, and then sellers come in below them here. See, this is where the sell. This is where all these buyers are. Rat they're, they're they're rattling in their boots here, shaking in their boots. And we can get the sellers in here, and then we can get some nice stops in here. Move this to the downside into 70 and 60 and maybe 50. Okay, yeah, thanks, thanks David. Europe down. VIX is a, a pivot approach again. Okay, so VIX to the downside, or I mean uh, VIX to the up, uh, David. Is that what you're looking at? Yeah, look at look at the see the sellers here, guys. Watch this now. Boom. We should get you know we'll see. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for these sellers to hit it hit it hard here. Okay, if you, if you think that's a position, this is where you'd be getting in. You'd place your stop up around 78 or so. And you're, and you're looking for your target to be 60. Okay, again, this is not trade or financial recommendation. Right, but that's the scenario. But see, see how we, you know, we're looking for that scenario here. We're looking, the opposite scenario is buyers on the other side here, around, around 80 or so. Okay. And then they're going to move it, and they're going to move it up into like 90 or 4,300 here. Okay, Th this is why I was just being really careful in this area in here, and and trying not to get on the hook. Okay, right? because this is this is the advertising here, right in here to the upside. Here's the advertising to the sell side, and we're still right back at in, in the middle here at 75. Okay, we're looking for a distinction in the, in the volume and also in the order book here to to help us. Uh, make a decision, right? To make a higher probability decision in here. Okay, we have some buy icebergs in here starting to enter. Okay, that might help us out. Let's take a look. Okay, I want to see that bid up here around 75, 74, 75. I want to see these guys pull at 80 and 80. 83 or 84. Okay, they're pulling, pulled a little bit at 80, and they're pulling up here at 84 as well. We're getting our buyers here. Okay. All right, let's see if they can move it now. That's some pretty good buying, and they, they're starting to move it. So let's see them try to move it now to 90. I think I think the buyers have it here. 
boy yeah again this is a tough a tough one uh, as a tough one maybe look for a pullback to 80 here you know and then be careful on a pullback here as well this is this is kind of you know um treacherous stuff in here uh because every, you know everyone uh is looking to enter but we're looking for an edge because you don't want to be on one side and get hit, get hit on the other so there's your pullback right and if you're a pullback trader this would be your entry it would be right around here in this 80 level yeah okay, I, I don't like it i still i still don't really like it in here i want to see bu more buyers up here more distinction on the buy side Okay. This is looking bet much better now. All right, all right. So I think I think buyers have it now. Looks like it. They should be able to reach 90. See the buying coming in, but it's still dark in here underneath on the bid. Okay, so I don't like that. Like I want to see them bid up, and I want to see the reaction to them bidding up in here uh, as uh, more more green dots. It it repels sellers. It it and uh, and and buyers enter uh, the market here, and we're not getting that right now, so we don't have a, a you know all of the pieces in here. Buying looks pretty good here and here. That's true. All right, let's see it. I'm still looking for the bid to light up here a little bit, a little bit lower here on 82. There's a little bit there. And what's the reaction to it? Should get buyers. Some front running here in around 89. Yeah. Yeah, nothing, nothing great, nothing great. Yeah, right back down to uh, liquidity here is at uh, 78. And it uh, looks like some of it pulled and some of it transacted. Okay, we're back down at 75 now. Okay, so yeah, we, you know, buyers should have been able to bring it up to 90 here. But we noted along the way, though, there's there was no support on the bid. So you know we're being, you know really had to pay attention to this area down here. It gets really kind of treacherous. Okay? Best thing to do is just watch, okay, uh, and uh, look for a big distinction in here because this is when we really want to see it. That big distinction, okay, in the order flow. And not get caught up in the advertising here. Hope this hope this makes sense. Yes, this is tricky. It's tricky trading. And it's tricky order flow. And you know, uh, players are looking for someone else to like make the first move here, and then get get them caught on one side, and then move it the, to the other side. Oh, we saw it many times in here, especially these poor sellers down here. They got they got uh, stopped to the upside in th these little areas here. Okay, we're back down to that liquidity at 70 here. Okay, we have our European close as well. So not a not a good time to be uh, to be trading. Volatility hard to read in here. We don't know what larger players are going to do. Okay, in the next uh, 
I don't know, 10 minutes or so. couple scenarios we can go through thinking about the European close. Anything we see down below, and you start to see a lot of absorption down below the lows here, uh, look for a move back to, to, to the uh, 4300 and, and back up above. Let's, uh, let's jump back, take our bigger picture approach here, take a breather. Okay, All right, we're back into, uh, uh, you know, still in the daily, we're kind of in this in this zone in, in here, okay, where we found our buyers previously back in October. Okay, so in, here's our hourly chart here. And we're still kind of, you know, waiting and watching if we're going to get back up into like uh, 3840. 15 minute chart like yeah we we're looking for some of those moves back up and it's back down and we're back down and near the lows again here so not really seeing much at the moment All right, well, let's zoom in here. And I wanted to go through a couple scenarios in here. Okay, we might get our move in here, but uh, let's just uh, take a look at kind of a smaller structure in here. Okay, and what we look for in that structure. And you see the volatility in here? See how this guy come, came in here? If one player has about 100 or more, and he just trans got transacted. Okay, and that's a stop run as well. And okay, let's zoom out. We're, we might be seeing something here. Okay. All right. Let's see if uh, see if buyers can sustain this move back up into ninety here. If European uh, traders, if they're going to be covering, so they'll likely be buying. All right, let's see it then. Here they go. If, if that's the case, then and look at the bid. See them on the bid here? Okay, now they don't want to trade here. They're just trying to skew the auction. They keep on flashing back in and out. We're looking for the reaction, though, to this liquidity here. Yeah, see how they? we know they didn't want to trade. We already knew that. And we're already there, and they already pulled. Here we go again. All right, guys. Well, yeah, still, still not seeing too much. This is starting to get interesting, though, especially right here at the close. Or European close. Yeah, let's see if they can get they get the run up into to 90 here. Yeah, we see them buying here. And again, they should be able, another barrage of buying. We should be able to get right up to 90, 88 and 90. Again, not nothing like high probability to, to, to really look at here. Just just considering like the close here. And another beautiful like uh, move back down in here. 
So again, they can they can they can close even at a better price. So let's see if we get a move right back up to 4280, 82. Okay, looking for that skew again on the bid, finding buyers. Just looking for a move back up to up up to here. Eighty two. Eighty two fifty. There's a bid. Look at the bid here. Now, let's just watch. On the bid, what's the reaction? Buyers. Okay, so now let's see if they can reach 88 or 90 as well. Okay, see, see the, the, the stronger bid. That's what we're looking for. And we found buyers. Okay, not a whole lot up in here. This is, this is where we really need to see them. And still holding. Looks like sellers want to take it on, though. Well, they don't. And now they should. Okay, so they took them on here. All right. Well, anyway, let's uh, let's zoom in here. I want to go through this this scenario here, just to, so you guys understand. A lot of new traders in here. I mean, we keep on popping in and out here, looking for the the bigger move to unfold, and we just we we just don't see it yet. Um, and it's just been really back and forth for quite a while in here, uh, trying to have, looking for an edge, but trying to not be fuel for the other side in here, being very attentive to that. Uh, so I wanted to just go through this example in here about uh, if we take a look at some of the uh, smaller, very small structures in here, like even microstructure we'll take a look at in here. Okay, and when we talk about microstructure, we're really talking about like this kind of activity in here. Okay, now bookmap can show all of it. Okay, so uh, here's the best offer is the red line. Here's the best bid. Uh, here's where, you know, the best um, offer went up one tick. There was a there was a, a two tick um, spread for a very small time frame. I mean, we're talking uh, uh, milliseconds here, very very short. But then the best bid went up, okay. And and then there was a one tick spread, okay. So now, what if we get buyers back up here again, seventy eight? Then we'd be looking to see if they can lift it one more tick up into seventy eight and a half or seventy eight and a quarter, seventy eight and a half. Okay, but this right now, in auction market theory, this is our high volume node here. Now it's not much, but believe me, you'll see uh, this hold true on these sub-second levels. Okay, auction market theory holds. So here, here we have a seller. 
Okay, now we have 12 trading here. This is our high volume node right now. Okay, we, it's our only volume node right now. Okay, but you see see how we're getting, like this is basically up here is, is a deal to trade it right back down. Okay, down here is a deal to trade it right back up. Okay, now we're looking to see buyers or sellers move it away from this area here, this three tick spread. Okay, now we're gonna take this same example in here we're going to extrapolate that into multiple uh, 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 price levels here and understand market structure. We talk, talked a lot about market structure today. Okay? We're going to use it on the smaller time frame here and look for an edge. Okay, you can even see a little bit of an edge in here. Like here they are on the bid down here and they bid up a little bit and see how the, the blue on here? They pulled. They even pulled up here and here on the offer. So we're just looking to see for more buyers, if we get more buyers up here at 78 now. If we do, then they should go after this liquidity here at 78 and a half. Here they are, okay, 78. Let's see if now they can move it, okay, to 78 and a half. No, back down to value. Okay, now they're back on the other side. Okay, back up, back to value. Now, 78, looking for our buyers again. No, nothing. They're still at, they're, they're at 77 and three quarters. Here we go. Okay, now the best, the best offer went up one more tick as well. Okay, so looking for some more buyers up here. We have a, look at the, look at the profile. See how it's a P shape now? It's only three ticks, but believe me, this holds true. We have 24 that traded here, 33 down below. This is still your high volume node, but we're seeing quite a bit up here now. Okay, so let's see if we can get more buyers up here and try to lift it up into our levels here of liquidity. Now note note that they're bidding or offering down a little bit in here as well. So it's getting really interesting on the offer in here, in the auction. And now they're adding even more though on the bid here uh, at 77. Okay, here we are. We're back up here. Okay, now, we're, and they pulled here at 78 and a quarter, this, this blue liquidity in here. So looking for a little bit more buying in here, and we should get our move. And there it is. There it is. Okay, and it transacted up here at 78 and three quarters. Okay, they went for it. They went for this liquidity. Okay, now, I, I, I didn't, you know... I know this is hindsight, but I was going through it. I just zoomed into an area, and we're going through the auction. That's it. Okay, and we're just looking for this move only. Okay, this is one of the reasons why, like, you could consider uh, your your trade strategy would be to look for this move from the inside to the outside, take your profit at the liquidity area or front running the liquidity area. Look for the next setup. Okay, if you're still in it. Okay, then you could be looking for pullbacks, getting in again, uh, and looking for continuation. All right, so anyway, lots of considerations in here, uh, and this game continues to ebb and flow and change dramatically. Okay, that we're just looking at the small little example way in here at microsecond level, but we're looking for that move. And, and it got more convoluted in here now too. But we're still finding buyers in here. Now what we're going to do is take that idea and we're going to extrapolate that to a higher time frame. This is no different. This is what we do in our trading education. It is no different than looking at and marking up these levels in here of areas of consolidation. Here's our breakdown and here's our consolidation. Okay, Same idea. It's just bigger uh, ranges. Now, what we're looking for is up in these ranges in here, what do they tell us? Okay, so look at the buying up here. Not a whole lot. What about uh, uh, buying or selling down in here? Now, there's, there's not a whole lot down here either. But these buyers, they can't seem to make a higher high in here. They make a lower high, a lower high. They're trying, they're, they're buying in here. They're not able to move it. And then we get a lot of selling here. We get we even make a lower high with a little bit of buying up here, and they just can't move it. This is when we're looking for the break. 
and the move to another lower level of liquidity and a new trading range to be established in here. Okay, just like we were looking on the micro time frame, now we're looking at a higher time frame in here. Okay, and we're understanding the order flow events within here. And we look for the, the bid and the offer, and we also look for the, um, uh, the, the, where the transactions are taking place in the structure. Okay, see how the transactions are taking place here at a lower level, and there's our break. And there's a beautiful stop run. Now, we just broke down to 50. Okay, that was the move we were looking for. Like if we went to the sell side here, we'd be looking for the move into the figure. We'd love to see it go a little bit below the figure. It, it and it did. It did, but nothing really transacted down there. Nothing. Just a, just the best bid is or, um, yeah. Well, the the best bid and offer kind of caught up a little bit later in here, um, but. Um, uh, anyway, uh, now now you can see we're um, we're back up above 50. We're at 60. Okay. Now, if this again same ideas here, if this is a stop run, and this is people exiting. Now we also have icebergs in here, so we have to be kind of attentive here. Are we going to accept or reject below 60? Okay, the scenario is, I mean, typically we go with the trend and you stay with the trend. Like there's more sellers. So we just made lows for the day and you'd be looking for more sellers to hit 50 here. They they never transacted at 50. And there now they are. All right, anyway, I'm going to leave you guys with this here. Uh, the other two scenarios here we're, we're trending lower we still look for more sellers at lower lows and you stay with the trend now if we get back up though here the other scenario would be buyers back up above the 60 level here big green dots this kind of size over here we want to see here okay so that kind of scaleize something like that and we'd be looking for these guys to start to pull this market back up to 75. Okay, but it's got to be above this 62 area here, somewhere around here. All right, and so that's another scenario here in the order flow. The key line is around this area here, around 61, 62. Okay, that means that anyone down below this area here, they're going to be trapped. And we'd be looking for them to try to move it away very quickly here. Now, this is a possible scenario if you want to look at your auction market theory for a mean reversion trade. Where would your first mean reversion trade be? It would be here at 75. Okay, it also could come back up to 4,300. Okay, so we'd be looking for that scenario, looking for buyers to enter in to bring it back up into 75, our high volume node up here. Okay. Are we going to accept? I mean, this is really thinly traded outside of this area here right now, but, but uh, 70 and, and below. Okay, so we'd be looking for buyers to come roaring back in to try to move it right back up into mean, uh, where it can trade, where it transacted earlier, previous value area. All right, so that's some auction market theory. We got icebergs supporting that idea as well. And they started buying here, right here. So are they going to buy some more? Let's see. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. All right. So let's look at let's look for buyers here at 57, and then a quick move up into our 62 line. I'm looking for buyers here. That's the scenario here. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if these guys pull here and add a little bit higher. There they did a little bit, and we got our buyers. Okay. Looking for the move to 62. And they're still buying icebergs, even up here. Okay. 
Okay, it's kind of establishing a new trading range in here. Okay, now now it's starting to now it's starting to break. Okay, so likely just come right back down into 50 here, and maybe a bit below. Right, this this is failing. This this structure is now breaking. We're looking at this little structure in here for maybe a bigger move, and now they're below it. So yeah, looking to see if we can get back down a little bit lower here. And there we go. See this see the skew on the offer right in here as well? Okay, that gives us some insight. Nice little stop run. Now looking for if we can get buyers back up above here though, right? Right at 52 and a half now. Okay, we're going to just take that same scenario on the uh, that we had over here at above 62. Now we're looking at 52 buyers, big green dots, back up to 60. Okay, this is a stop run, so kind of empty trading in here. If we get new buyers coming in here, looking for the move. Okay, I like this one even better because we're now we're down at a lower low here. All right, let's see it. Looking for it right here, right now. Okay, let's see this bid show a little bit more here. It's starting to show a little bit, not much. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't get, we didn't get it. We didn't get it. We didn't get it on the bid in here. Okay, back down to lower lows. Okay. And then sellers, sellers going for 40. Anyway, this trade here and looking for this to work out is is lower probability. If we see the big green dots, though, we most likely got it. Okay. And we didn't get it. We didn't get anything like it. And okay. we're looking for it in here. We didn't get it. We're getting big red. We're getting the same size red dots over here. So it's still trending lower. Yeah, and, and then David David W. here is watching the VIX closely, and he's looking for that correlation. This is another great thing to take a look at. Look, we can just do it here with uh, looking at uh, uh, other stock indexes. Okay, so uh, Russell still going lower. Okay. NASDAQ still going lower. So this is, everything's trending lower. So go with the trend. Still looking for it to go lower. If we start to see breaks in this, though, and you start to see those buyers come in, and we'll look for it. Russell usually goes first. Uh, guys, also like another thing we've been seeing this for, I mean, long time. Like when you get all three indexes going the same direction, it takes a lot to turn it around. So you know, going with the trend is is the way to go. This other scenario that we're talking about here, like you know, look look, it, the higher probability is wait for these indexes to start to turn around, or look at the VIX like David is doing, uh, and uh, uh, you know, once you start to see that starting to unfold. Now you got something that it takes a while for these indexes to turn around. Okay, so this S&P is trying to get back up above 40 here. Okay, how's, how's the, okay, well, this is starting to work a little bit here. Okay, our, our uh, NASDAQ is, our Russell is okay. All right, so now is, that makes this higher probability though, right? That we can trade back to 45 now. Okay. Let's zoom out. I'm still looking for the big hook here. And the big hook is going to be below these swings on the daily here. 
and then lots of absorption just tons of absorption on the bid and then the buyers to start to come in okay, and then the move back up back into the range now I'm not looking for a total reversal or anything like that I'm just looking for a move back into the range and we have lots of reasons for looking for these different scenarios in the order flow okay so for example profit takers on the daily on the higher time frame down here at the swing other buyers coming in in these areas here this is a discount these are really strong moves to the downside Okay, we can see really strong moves right back up too. All right, and then we started to mark up. That's how we marked up our levels in the beginning of the webinar. Okay, and why why we had our reasons for some of those uh, uh, levels in here. Okay, lots of icebergs coming right back in. Right in this area here. About two thousand. It's not bad, right in this area here. All right, so I yeah I, I like this I like this move actually. Here come some buyers here. Let's see, is the Nasdaq starting to move? A little bit. Yeah, Nasdaq. All right, Russell, they're ready. All right, so I'd be looking for buyers to come in here, 44, and let's see if they can move it back up to. Yeah, 55, maybe uh, maybe 60. Okay, looking for it. Looking for that scenario here. This looks higher probability to me because of the correlations. Now, the order flow in terms of higher higher probability, I don't see it yet. I'm looking for, I'm seeing buyers here. Here they come. They just took these guys on at 45. I want to see the bid though light up here underneath and try to push this. A little bit, not much. Yeah, let's see the move back up to 50 first. Okay, how are correlations doing? Okay, NASDAQ's looking pretty good. All right, S&P should follow. Okay, there's our move to 50. Okay, still looking for higher move here. Still looking for higher. Uh, up to, I like this 60 area up here. There's a bit of a pullback here, a little bit of a flag pattern. It, it's, it's taking a pause here and then continuing. Now, this was tricky in terms of like trying to trying to find an entry in here. I mean, you know, so this is not financial advice, but there's many considerations. Jumping in is what I like to do. I mean, I, I see the move. I, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the order flow. I know there's buyers in here. I know they want to lift it. I looked at the NASDAQ and the Russell. I know they're lifting it. They're ahead. So I'm looking for the move to 50 minimum. I like 60. Okay, I jump in here around 45. It's a horrible entry if you look at this. Okay, but I'm looking for it to move. If it doesn't, I'm out. I give it a little bit of room here, wiggle room with a very tight stop. Okay, in this case, tight stop would mean for three points, which is you know, it's enough. I mean, uh, that's that's kind of kind of a lot. Um, but it's kind of more volatile here, right? And then uh, you, there's way, different ways of, of, of managing it. You can take some off at 50, but or you can hold for for a bigger move here. Since we got the correlated markets, I'd probably hold for a bigger move, right? I'd I'd certainly be moving my stop up though. I'll tell you that, right? And I would I would get in, give it another shot. Look for another high probability trade and give it another shot. Okay. So uh, these are a few different ways to consider the management in here uh, and looking for these moves and capturing some of these moves. Now, look, look, what, look what gave us a lot of insight in here. It was the correlations. It was the correlated markets. Right, here's our move. Now we're at 60. Beautiful. Take some off. I would. I might even, I might even exit. I don't know though. I mean, like the the one thing that on these correlated moves, I'm still trying to figure it out myself. Like when these, you know, when you got all indexes going going the same direction, it takes a while. It takes a while to stop it. 
Uh, you know, we continued on down. It took a while for it to turn around. Okay, so 70 might be the target here. 70 liquidity or even, you know, back to 75 here, our, our higher volume node. Look at this tail here on the, on our, uh, um, uh, the uh, profile here, right? Anyway, guys, look, I, I got to go. It, it, it's been, it, it, um, uh, kind of an interesting uh, webinar going through a bunch of different scenarios in here. Um, it's, it's, um, uh, I've, you know, I've got, I've got to go. We got to end this. It's almost been uh, almost two hours now. We're coming up on two hours here. I wanted to go through some of these details, though. Uh, we got some newer traders in here, uh, and kind of outline our education a bit of what what you guys uh, uh, are, um, or what our education is about. Now, our education, um, we, we what our goal here is to provide a foundation for you guys. A foundation and here's why okay because guess who's going to stream next okay we're going to have tom b streaming next okay now he's going to be popping in and out like uh for the rest of the day uh and uh this sets up some considerations with this with a foundation of understanding order flow now tom he he trades volume profile he looks at the s p and he's he's um, uh an expert with volume profile okay so that's his way of trading his trading strategy right so uh, hopefully this provides a bit of a foundation for you guys to now bring that to volume profile and market profile all right so uh, that's our goal here right so that you, you guys uh, then you, you know Scott Pulsini looks at, at uh, uh, you know some volume profile as well J traders looking for things that are already moving heavily and then he's looking for pullbacks that's one of his main strategies okay he has a lot of other fader strategies which are very unique to stocks which are excellent just excellent and he's just made just a bundle uh, of money off of his uh, his strategies uh, but anyway uh, anyway guys let's uh, uh, let's end it up end it up here uh, thanks guys for the uh, com uh, uh, comments in here and uh, we will uh, uh, I'll have this up on YouTube a little bit later today uh, and then uh, uh, take a look for the uh, red streaming in here for Tom B. He'll be in pretty shortly, I imagine. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, maybe take some of this foundation with you, right? Cons some of these considerations. Uh, and then, uh, you, you know, you guys have uh, uh, something to, to lean on. All right. Okay. Have a good day, everybody. We'll catch up tomorrow. Thanks.